When billionaire investors who avoided tech for decades start buying in, I think that's a signal about how fast AI is changing and the importance this technology is to companies around the world. This one's a cracker. I'm old enough to remember when, <laughs> when Steph <laughs> sold Google, like, right? Yeah. And bought Meta, remember? Yes. yes. Remember? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now I'm wondering if we're gonna have a reversal. You gonna sell Meta and buy Google? Are you nuts? <laughs> Are you absolutely I don't know. nuts? I mean, look at the direction of these stocks. No way. Put up Meta. Yeah. We'll take a look. Put up Meta versus Alphabet. Actually, over the last six months, let's just look at that for the sake of the conversation. Because mm -hmm. I'm just bringing it up. Of course. Because you know, Meta. Everybody was all bulled up on Meta after their worst year ever. Then they had their best year ever. And now I think we have a much more idiosyncratic picture as it relates to the hyperscalers who is perceived to be well ahead of the pack, who has more questions about it, and where six months ago, Alphabet seemed to have all the questions about it, we are asking those questions of Meta now. So we're supposed to buy low and sell high. So those guys that actually bought more Google, Alphabet, congratulations to, to both of you. I think Josh also owns it, so congratulations, that's great. But I think that there's tremendous value in Meta, especially after the 21% correction, especially since the earnings estimates actually went higher despite the concerns about higher expenses. So it's now trading at 17 times forward estimates. You know I've been adding to it on the decline mm -hmm. because they are seeing the ROI, just like you just mentioned, yep. in a different way. They're seeing better double digit impression growth, 14% because of AI. They're seeing time spent increase 5% because of AI. And they get, they're getting pricing power. And oh, by the way, they have a $31 billion buyback program, which I'm sure they're in there down here. I'm, at least I'm hopeful. And I, and I do like that they are using Broadcom's custom chips. They might use speculation. They may, might use Google's custom chips. They're setting themselves up to be in the game and no one's giving them credit because they don't have a cloud business. That to me is crazy speak. And so I think we're gonna make a lot of money in Meta over time, just have to be patient because I don't see a near term catalyst, but the stock is awfully cheap for the growth that you're getting. By the way, 20% earnings growth, 26% revenue growth. That's, that's the, pretty impressive. That's the problem, I guess, Josh, is what Steph just said, at least it relates to Meta. Um, I don't see a near term catalyst because all of these other names seem to have near term catalysts and they're capitalizing on them like Google, Alphabet, which according to the information now, Meta is considering spending billions of dollars on Google's TPUs. They currently rely on NVIDIA's GPUs. So this is another near-term catalyst for this name, that name being Alphabet, which you don't own, by the way. Yeah, well, the whole world owns Alphabet. It's like the fourth largest company in every major index. So the question is, <clears throat> Are you overweight Alphabet or not? And I screwed up with this name. I sold it closer to 200. And I did believe that um, chat GPT usage and Claude and a lot of enterprise AI products would be a threat to search. And I think they still might be, but that doesn't matter because what Google has done beautifully is respond to the challenge around its core business with new product. And that new product is working. And it's not just Gemini 3. Yesterday I was on the show, we talked about Nano Banana, which is their answer to Sora. Like they're gonna have uh, best in class products in every major category of AI. And we weren't sure that that would be the case as recently as six to nine months ago. So for the people who made the bet that they would, those people are, are getting paid right now. I think the, the lesson though, for me and for everybody else, is how easily a narrative can form based on share price action, whether it's up or down, and then how quickly that narrative could not just fade away, but completely reverse. Think about the storylines that we've seen this year around AI that have come, gone, and then completely went the other direction. In the early going, Meta was the most aggressive in AI. They were hiring engineers and paying people billion dollar salaries vis-a-vis -vis, uh, acquisitions of startups. Uh, it really looked like they were off to a running start and everyone else was still sleeping. Now, Meta's in this bucket where nobody's really sure about whether or not their AI strategy beyond monetizing reels will be good. Same with Apple. They're not spending enough. Why aren't they doing anything? Why don't they buy perplexity? Wah! Now the narrative is, look, they didn't spend too much. 
They didn't get themselves into off balance sheet debt deals with Blue Owl. They didn't do any of that stuff. Uh, new all time high. So I don't know what the narrative will be on Meta six months from now. It could be the polar opposite. People could look at them and say, thank God they don't have a cloud business where they're spending all this money to facilitate other people's AI. Thank God they could just focus on their own business. So um, I don't think that we want to just look at the last month of Alphabet and Meta and Microsoft and draw these like hard and fast conclusions about what might happen in 26, because you could just flip the deck of cards in the air and pick up the cards in a different order and things could look very different. Sure. Scott's right that Meta's considering spending billions on Google's TPUs is a major near-term catalyst. Meta is in talks to spend billions on Google's TPU chips starting in 2027, and Meta may also rent TPUs from Google's cloud. Google's been playing a completely different game than everyone assumed. Google released its tensor processing units a decade ago to help speed up the company's web search engine and boost efficiency, and later adapted for machine learning tasks. For years, analysts dismissed TPUs as just internal infrastructure Google used for its own products. The thinking was, sure, Google has custom chips, but Nvidia owns the market because everyone builds on CUDA and buys H100s. That dismissal now looks pretty foolish. Around 2013, Google's leadership calculated that if every Android user utilized voice search for just three minutes a day, the company would need to double its global data center capacity just to handle the compute load. Google didn't build TPUs because they wanted to sell chips. They built them because buying enough GPUs to power their services would have financially stretched the company. And that origin story matters because it means Google optimized TPUs for actual production AI workloads, not just benchmark performances. TPUs are generally four to 10 times more cost-effective than GPUs in scenarios such as large-scale language model training, offering up to 1.4 better time performance per dollar compared to NVIDIA's B200 GPUs. And by the way, if you're watching this and you want a super simple breakdown of why TPUs and GPUs perform so differently, we actually cover this visually in our AI course. I'll put a quick graphic on the screen now so you can see the core differences at a glance. In the meantime, while you're looking at this, we're rolling out early access to our new AI course. And since you're watching this channel, you get first look in. If you want to actually understand AI at a practical level, the real trends, players, and how this applies to you, this course takes you from total confusion to full clarity. You can grab lifetime access for just 90 bucks right now. We'll be adding future modules as AI moves and you'll get it all. The price is going up two to three X this Sunday evening. So if you want in at the lowest price it will ever be, the link is in the description. In the meantime, Google stated that the TPU V7 is 100% better in performance per watt than their TPU V6. These are the economics Google used to justify building their own chips instead of buying from Nvidia. When you're running services at Google scale, efficiency compounds. A chip that's 40% more power efficient doesn't just save you 40% on electricity, it saves you on cooling, on data center construction and everything downstream. That's why Google's TPU V5 series is projected to ship 1.9 million units by the end of 2025, representing 76% of total volume. The meta deal is very important too, because it proves the economics work for other hyperscalers too. Meta wouldn't consider spending billions on TPUs if they weren't seeing real cost advantages versus buying more NVIDIA chips. The Google Anthropic deal too provided up to 1 million TPUs, which marked a major step and makes them more credible as an alternative to NVIDIA's GPUs for both training and application of AI models. Think about what this means strategically. Every major AI company is capacity constrained right now. Microsoft admitted that despite massive investment, the company is still struggling to meet demand for AI services. When you can't get enough NVIDIA chips, your entire AI strategy stalls. TPU solve that problem. It's for a lot of companies about diversifying and getting access to that compute they need because companies are saying they're capacity constrained and don't have the chips necessary to build out their infrastructure. Google is finally showing visible commercial progress with its AI models and its custom hardware showing cohesion in its AI strategy. So many investors have been waiting to see for nearly a year. For the first time, Google is competing on the full stack. Models plus chips plus cloud infrastructure. Google released Gemini's 3, a well-reviewed state-of-the-art AI model 
that was trained on the company's TPUs, not NVIDIA's GPUs. TPUs are now being sold externally, so we're watching a 10-year internal project potentially becoming a multi-billion dollar business. If Meta goes through with this deal and other hyperscales follow, Google's chip business could be generating tens of billions of dollars annually by 2027. That's a new revenue stream Wall Street barely has in their models. But the really striking thing is how fast the narrative around Google completely reversed. Josh Brown nailed what might be the most important lesson about AI investing. Narratives flip at the speed of light. Six months ago, investors were worried whether Alphabet, otherwise known as Google, could compete in AI. The speed and scale of this reversal exposes how fragile investor conviction becomes when competing against headline risk. Investors questioned the amount Google was spending on AI after the company estimated 50 billion in 2024. Investors who sold during that fear left enormous gains on the table. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger held a long standing regret over missing Google. It was particularly painful because Geico, Berkshire's automotive insurance unit was one of Google's earliest major advertisers. Warren had a front row seat to Google's business model and still didn't invest. Now, 20 years later, Berkshire finally bought in, likely because paid clicks on search accelerated growth, proving the core franchise survives the AI disruption threat. Here's one thing which I think separates winners from the losers in these AI narrative driven markets. Winners recognize when fear creates the opportunity. When Google announced that massive capex increased and the stock tanked, the correct read was that management saw enough demand to justify the spending not that they were panicking. The meta discussions to use Google's TPUs, one of the first large-scale deployments of a non-NVIDIA AI accelerator by a major tech company, validating that Google's chips are working at scale. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.